In the event of an in-custody death, we have to be prepared. We have to be prepared to properly preserve the body and the effects of the crime scene around the body. Hi, I'm Gary York. Please subscribe if you like this video. With all of the care, custody, and control we provide as officers, 24-7, watching the inmates, making sure nothing goes wrong, and with the medical care for the inmates, we're going to have inmates die. And we know for a fact that the majority of inmate deaths every year are by natural causes. So when you see the numbers uh, from each state come in and you see 431 inmates died in a certain state, remember the majority of, the majority of those are natural deaths. However though, we will have some suspicious cases and some suspicious evidence in some deaths. So we must treat every death in the prison exactly the same way in the way we handle it, the way we respond, the way we protect the crime scene, because we have to protect the integrity of ourselves, the frontline officers, to make sure we do the right thing. We have to protect the integrity of the agency. And when the death becomes public, we need to make sure we have our ducks in a row so that when we're being interviewed uh, in a courtroom by a defense attorney one day, we know what we're talking about and we know what we're doing. Uh, there's many ways to train for this in advance. If you don't want to, then that's on you. Um, I wish you luck when the time comes when the uh, investigation starts and uh, defense attorneys start hammering and the media starts hammering our agencies for an answer not trying to be mean but that's the truth we have to be ready for these things because although they may not happen that often when they do in some cases they explode so please be ready and there's several ways to do that our agencies can conduct classroom training and live scenario training where you actually have scenarios a combination of classroom training and then going out and doing a scenario where it's all set up in, in a cell and you have uh, groups go through together and do scenarios is a great way to do this. Now, you can also sign up for courses for in-custody death. There are many, many, many courses out there that you can look at online or you can actually attend. And I hope your agency would allow you, if they are not teaching in-custody death uh, training at your facility, at your jail or your prison, I surely hope that if you wanted to sign up for a course, uh, for example, Missouri Corrections has one going on uh, in April 2019 this year. It's a great course to attend and everyone needs to have it. Every officer at some point has to go through in custody death training. If you're gonna make a career of corrections, you will run into this. So there's several ways to train. Hopefully your agency provides it. If not, you can do it as well. Have your agency pay for that training also if you sign up for an in-custody death. I mean, that's the least they can do. You're working the front line. Sorry about that, uh, prison uh, uh, financial office, but uh, or the state financial office, but we need to train our officers and we need to pay for their training. That's my personal opinion. Um, let me just give you an example of what, is I, what I was saying by most uh, deaths in prison are natural deaths and I'm going to look at the paper to give you two states that I take, have taken. We don't have time to go through all 50 states but you're welcome to Google it and look at the 50 states. I'm going to take the third largest prison population in America, the Florida uh, Corrections, and their report from fiscal year 2017-2018 indicates 481 in-custody deaths. So if you think it's not important to know what to do during an in-custody death, look at some of the numbers that we're getting year after year from different states. Now, out of 481, 331 of those were natural deaths, okay? But you cannot rely on everyone being a natural death, okay? We can have suspicious circumstances in any death in prison, which will alert authorities and will alert a major investigation so you must treat each death scene and each death uh, with knit uh, gloves and make sure that you take care of it now 
85 were accidental deaths listed in Florida of those 481. Eight homicides. You never know when it's going to be a homicide. You may find a, a, a dead inmate in a cell. You don't know yet whether it's a natural death, an accident, or a homicide. So in a minute, we're going to go over some precautionary things when you come up on the scene on what to do to help you, the frontline officer, first responder, stay straight and have your things in order. Um, 17 of those 481 were suicides. We know that that can happen. We also know that when we come up on what appears to be a suicide, may not always be a suicide. It could be a homicide. Again, another reason why we must know what to do on in-custody death response. 40 of the 481 cases from the fiscal year 2017-2018 uh, are listed as still pending, but they may be done by now. This is January 2019, and they may be done by now. And why would they still be pending? Well, they're still under investigation. Um, uh, they haven't been released yet due to circumstances. Um, different agencies may be investigating and have not given their final report. So now let's take a smaller state like Nevada Department of Corrections, which has a lot smaller inmate population. And they had uh, on their 2018 uh, report 43 in custody deaths. So state by state varies. Of course, the larger populated inmate states will have a larger obviously, um, death report. Okay, now let's remember when we respond or come up on the scene, inmates are being held in our prisons and we do everything we can to prevent death, but it's going to happen. When you walk up onto the scene of an in-custody death, assess the situation, look around, check your area, head on a swivel, and when you realize that this inmate is either dead or possibly dead, you immediately contact your supervisors via radio and ask for help and backup and ask for a supervisor to come on the scene. Okay, every agency now has policies and procedures. So I'm just giving you a guideline. Follow your agency's policy and procedure. So what would you do? You need to know that, right? You need to go to your agency's policy and procedure on these type things and find out what you need to do. So there's two things we need to know. We need to know our agency's policy on in-custody deaths, and we need to train on in-custody deaths. Okay, two things that need to be done. Supervisors, please make sure those are done, or one day uh, you'll regret not training the frontline staff in these areas. And supervisors, if you're not trained, please prison management, make sure your supervisors are trained in in-custody death, or it really doesn't help the front line very much if the supervisors aren't trained. Okay, now, once you get the situation under control and you've already radioed for help, call for medical assistance. The inmate may not be deceased. The inmate may not be dead. So obviously, we're going to call for medical assistance. And obviously, when medical arrives, we're going to allow them to assess the situation also to determine if there's anything that can be done to save the inmate's life. Now, while all this is going on, you need to remove all non-essential personnel from the scene. Move all inmates to and lock them down in your area. You know, you, you may not be able to lock down the entire prison immediately, but at least in your area where the situation is, where the crime scene is, lock down the inmates because we know they're curious, they're going to look, if it is a suspicious death and they see anything laying around that may indicate how this death occurred, you know the inmates will try to remove it to protect another inmate that may have uh, caused this death. Okay, so make sure you remove all essential personnel. Do not clean up anything, please. And, and we put this in bold letters. Do not clean up anything. Many cases we've investigated over the years uh, in the Florida Inspector General, officers didn't mean to. They thought they were doing the right thing. They had the inmate orderlies come in and put the gloves on and the mask and clean up. Don't clean up. We'll, we'll, we'll do that later. Keep everybody back. Start a log immediately and get someone 
to use to uh, work that log for you as you protect the crime scene. We do not want many people in that crime scene. We want to see the least amount of names of people in that crime scene. We don't need every officer in there coming to see what it looks like. We do thank those officers for coming and responding. We need that. But please step back. Don't step all over the crime scene. We're going to see some medical staff went in. We're going to see an officer or two went in. Obviously, they're the first responders. We're going to see uh, the medical examiner later coming into the crime scene because we have to have a medical examiner come in to uh, try to announce uh, death of the inmate, that the inmate is deceased. Um, supervisor's probably going to come in. So you're going to see some names, but let's keep it down. Let's don't have an audience coming in and out, in and out. Uh, on your log, Nurse Smith arrives, 0900, assesses the situation. Uh, 0903, Nurse Jones comes in with Nurse Smith, and at 09. 20, both Nurse Smith and Jones exit. You know, um, <clears throat> so that's that's what you have to have logged, everybody that comes in. Let's get some crime scene tape up. I'm sure every prison or jail has crime scene tape. They should. Let's get that area blocked off and have the crime scene blocked off and have our scribe right on the outside of the crime scene tape, allowing or denying people access into the crime scene. Do not ever leave the crime scene until properly relieved. Once the jail detective, the prison inspector, or local law enforcement, whoever you have investigating this death, when they arrive, you will probably, the first person on the scene, still be assisting them with scribing and watching the crime scene. There should still be a couple of our correctional officers there watching and assisting. But once they tell you you're done and you're properly relieved, then you leave. Don't wander off and get a cup of coffee or a soda. I know in our job, um, we can look at a, at a body, many of us, and drink a cup of coffee right there. But don't do it. Don't wander off. Let's stay focused on our job at hand. Uh, I got kicked out of an um, autopsy because I was drinking coffee and the medical examiner walked in in Fort Myers and said, Please leave, get rid of the coffee, and come back in. I should have known better. No food and drinks. Why? Well, we don't want it in an autopsy. We definitely don't want the food and drinks at a crime scene. Because anything you leave behind or spill could be mistaken to have been there already. So that's why we don't want anything brought into the crime scene. Um, when you write your report, please take your time and write your report uh, with the information we needed, of course, it's, you know, the same old thing with report writing. But make sure you get every important detail you have into your uh, report, into your incident report or witness statement, how, whatever your agency uses. And uh, make sure you put the time that you found the uh, body, location you found the body, approximate time anything you see in the area if you saw any weapons if you saw blood splatters the position you saw the body laying any anything of this nature please uh, get it in the report any unusual circumstances any suspicious activities get all that into your report because the investigators and the state attorney need to know that later on down the road so the details that you may think are not important could very well be important and help solve the case. You are on the front line responder and you could solve the case alone based on what you observed, what you witnessed, and what you wrote in your report. These are just a few tips to try to bring attention to you and your supervisors to learn in custody death. Learn what to do. Learn how to handle it. Get out there and do some live scenarios. Get out there and do some online training and try to sign up for in-custody death classes. I hope this little bit of information I've just given you, it only t is the, touches the tip of the iceberg, but I hope it kind of alerts you to check this out when you have a little bit of downtime. There's not much. Our 12-hour shifts are filled. But if you get five or 10 minutes, 
check out in custody death. Thank you. Gary York, True Prison Stories. Please subscribe.